I'm Dr. Rick Green from the medical school class of 1970 and it's my uh, great pleasure today to uh, be the moderator of this series of video interviews honoring our emeritus professors here at the University Medical School. And it's my extreme pleasure to uh, be talking with Dr. Charles Gross today, uh, surgeon, ENT surgeon extraordinaire. <laughs> and uh, Charlie, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. You know a lot about the university, but how did, how did you happen to get here? How did you come to this university in the beginning? Well, first place I was born in Covington, Virginia, right over the mountains. And I always thought so highly of the university and the family did so much, but uh, ended up when I was uh, getting ready to go to high school, we moved to Kentucky and uh, ended up going to the University of Kentucky to graduate school, after which uh, a four-year tour with Uncle Sam, which was before medical school. What branch were you in? The Navy. Navy. Mm -hmm. Good. I was in the amphibs the whole time. And uh, then after uh, I uh, got out of the Navy, I had applied for an early discharge and powers that be wouldn't let me out even though I had leave time. So I had to lose another year of medical school mm -hmm. and then came to medical school. Actually, I went my first two years medical school at the University of Louisville and transferred here, one of the few people to transfer in, but uh, the dean was kind enough to let me transfer in, and then uh, I was like coming back home, coming back to Virginia, and then I ended up staying here for my first year of postgraduate work for Dr. Fitzhugh sent me north. Right. When did you first decide that maybe ENT was, was for you? <laughs> Whew. This interview would go very long if we aren't careful here. I'll cut you off when we need to, <laughs> right. don't worry. Well, I was going into uh, OB, probably, and uh, when I was a senior in med school, I was rotating through laryngology and uh, was fortunate enough to be making rounds with Dr. Fitzhugh, who was chairman of the ENT at that time. And, uh, Nothing against the general surgeons, but uh, <laughs> he was called and consultated to see a patient who was in the hospital for several days and had open neck biopsy and so forth for squamous cell cancer, and no one could find the uh, primary lesion. And uh, so I was on rounds with Dr. Fitzhugh, and he went up and saw the patient, saw the lesion. He said to the resident, <coughs> Go fetch me an anterior tonsil pill or retractor. In which case the resident did. He sprayed the little topical in the throat, put in the anterior tonsil pill or retractor, and said, See, there it is. He pointed out a little pinpoint lesion on the tonsil and said, That's the problem. And I said, My gosh, if somebody can do that, that impressively. That's a specialty I'm very interested in. Now that, that principle has never changed. If you <laughs> see a node in the neck, you always do a good oral exam. <laughs> right. and, and you're a proponent of that. That's, that's wonderful. Yes, so that was, that cemented it. And then, uh, unfortunately, that was the last part of my senior year. And so I told Dr. Fitzhugh I wanted to go into laryngology. And he said, well, we'd love to have you, but we're filled up for the next two years. And I said, well, I'm sorry about that. I would prefer to go here, but I will apply somewhere else. I applied to a well-known group down in Tampa, Florida, the Farrier Brothers. You may not have heard of them, but they were very famous nodal laryngology at that time. So I applied to their residency and as a fluke, and at his suggestion, I applied to Massachusetts Island Air Infirmary Harbor. And, um, then came time for uh, residency selection, and uh, I got a very nice telegram from Florida telling me I'd been accepted in their program and I had 48 hours to reply. So I 
Vince, the Dr. Fitch, you was my mentor. I took the telegram and showed him that and said, I was really happy. I've got a residency. I said, I'm going to Florida, Dr. Fitch. You, you will not. Professors could do that in those days. And uh, so he said, I said, well, Dr. Fitch, you, I've got a reply. And I, the only other place I applied was a Harvard Mass Iron Air Infirmary, and frankly, I'm a southern boy and I didn't like them and they didn't like me and I know I won't get in up there. So come back and see me tomorrow at noon. So I came back the next day at noon and Dr. Fitz, you'd been on the phone to the chairman up there and hadn't accepted the program. So this little old southern Virginia boy had to end up four years in Boston. Things, things were done a lot easier back then, weren't they? <laughs> there was a lot more mess. seamless. Yeah. <laughs> right. But the professor had a lot of clout in those days. Yeah. Well, over the years, of course, you've seen uh, many residents, many students. What's, what's changed, uh, let's, let's say, in, in, in the fact of, of students or, or people going into to medicine that you've changed? Is there any, anything that bothers you uh, about uh, uh, people today, or, or are they better than, than we were? Well, frankly, I think they're probably a little better. Uh, you know, in the days, I graduated in 61, a few years after you, and in the, in the, at that period of time, a lot of people were going into medicine because of the financial response, or, or good, goodness that came out of medicine. No doctor had any financial problem at all, hardly in those days, and a lot of people were going into medicine for a good way to make a good living. And I think that's changed a lot. I see medical students today being a lot more altruistic than we were, I think. And I think that's a good thing. The medical students that I come in contact with, I'm very impressed with today. They're very high quality, especially here at UVA. <laughs> Absolutely. What have you done with the Alumni Association over the years? Because you've been a, a noted alumnus. Oh, I've had a great experience with Alumni Association. I, I was... Um, on the board of directors for a while, and then I was on the foundation board, and then I was secretary of the Alumni Association for a while. And fortunately, uh, one of the things I'm proudest of is the Alumni Association one year gave me the honor of being alumnus of the year. I was very proud of that. And then just a year before last or something like that, uh, I was awarded the Walter Reed Award. So those are two things from the Alumni Association that I feel very proud of and very thankful for. Well, that's why I asked the question, because I, <laughs> I knew about those things and I wanted to make sure we got those into our discussion. Tell me what you're doing outside of medicine today. Playing a lot of tennis. Love to play tennis. and uh, I'm in a group with some retired physicians and others, and we have old men's doubles about three or four times a week. We don't play the game that most people call tennis, but I think the thing about it is we probably have more fun. Are you traveling? Travel some, and uh, believe it or not, at this stage of my life, building a new house and moving into it next week. Congratulations. Thank you. It's, uh, my daughter, who's a graduate of the nursing school here, uh, is a nurse at the Nellie's Ford family clinic out there, and they have a piece of property out there. and. They're nice enough to let us build on their property. So, mom and dad are going to be with daughter and son-in-law a few blocks away. That's the best thing in the world. I'm looking so forward to it. I'm very fortunate. So, not only being at the university, but Charlottesville itself has been important to you. Oh, very definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, one time I was interviewed for the alumni magazine, and. Uh, the uh, question was said to me, why did you come back to Charlottesville and the University of Virginia? My reply was, I didn't want to wait till I died to go to heaven. <laughs> well, and I don't think we can surpass that. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure to um, have Dr. Charles Gross with us today. Charlie, thank you so much for everything you've done for this alumni organization. Oh, thank you for the alumni association.